everyone. Today it's yet again another exciting day for the MyZone online school. My name is Marisol Sofberg and today we have so many lessons lined up for you. I hope you are ready to get smarter. But you're already smart, so now we're just making you more smart. So first, please remember to always sanitize our hands. And also remember that our theme for this week is staying at home. So please stay at home. Don't walk around unnecessarily. And, and that way we can curb the spread of the coronavirus. So now pre-primary and grade one learners, I hope you are ready for week five, lesson three. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Lentina Huacus and I'm joined by my friend. This week's theme is shapes. But before we start with our lesson, let's sanitize our hands. It's very important to sanitize our hands to kill all the germs. Make sure your hands are nice and dry. Today's lesson will be triangles and rectangles. Turn to page 13. On this page, we're going to finish the picture and we're going to draw the sun above the castle. Draw a door between the square and the windows. Yes, you can do that. Yes, I can see you show me where you have to draw. But with that, you need mommy and daddy to help you at home. Let's look at this part where we have to count the shapes. Yes, at the bottom of the castle. There we're going to look at the castle very carefully and count the shapes. Well done. Now, because we are talking about the triangle who has got three sides and three corners. Yes, you can count to make sure one, two, three, four. No, that's not the one. The one on top of the castle. Yes, that's a triangle with the three sides. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Three, only three sides. Well done. Now we're going to count them and we write the number, the correct number in the square given to you to write inside. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you so much. You touched it while you were counting it to make sure, yes. Let's write it in where it's given. It says, uh, the question is, how many triangles can you see? So we write it in there. 
Thank you so much. I hope you will finish this at home with mom and dad. Now we're going to turn to page 14. And it's still going about the triangle. Yes, I also like fishes. And I also like trees, yes, and boats and kites. They are all made out of a triangle. Well done. You're getting clever by the day. Now let's look at the boat. Where can you see the triangle on the boat? Yes, well done. That's the part where the sail is. Yes, can you please get your pencil? Remember to sit up straight and trace over the dotted lines. Yes, you can color in, of course, with the color of your choice. Well done. Let's look at the big one next to the boat. Yes, start at the top, trace down with the pencil, and you finish all the corners. Yes, it has got three corners. Now, we're going to ask our friend, it is going to draw the triangle first, and then we're going to ask our friend to come and help us to write the triangle, draw a triangle on the blackboard. So I will start at the top and I go to my left, then I turn to my right and I go up and join the triangle. Well done. Now we're going to ask our friend to come and help us to draw her own triangle of her choice. You can choose any color. Thank you so much for being so willing to help. Well done, that's nice and straight. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. Now you can finish the rest of the exercise at home. Let's turn to page 15. There we've got a very beautiful fish bowl. Can you see any fishes inside there? Yes, you are correct, one fish. But this exercise, we have to complete the fish in the bowl and draw four more fishes in the bowl. Well done. Yes, it should be the shape of the triangle. If you draw your little fishes, try to hold your pencil correctly and draw four more fishes. It means you have to draw them inside so that we can get how many fishes that you are done. Yes, one and four fishes give us five fishes. And when you are done, then you can color in. Yes, with your color of your choice. I like red, but you can choose any color you want. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you will enjoy this finishing this exercise at home. Can you kindly turn to page 16? Well done. I can see you are all there. Remember to sit up straight because we're going to be doing some tracing here as well. A rectangle has four sides. Two short, yes, and two long. So that you cannot get confused yourself with the square. It has got four sides, two short, and too long, yes. Now let's look at the little picture of the house there. Yes, you are right. It looks the same. Did you check your doors at home to double check that it is a rectangle shape? Well done. Now you can take your pencil and trace over the door and color in. Just go check what color your door is at home and then you can do the same color. Well done. 
let's look at the next one, big one there. Start at the top, take your pencil, start at the top and trace over that. Well done. Now, teacher's going to draw a rectangle at the board. So you must look very carefully. Okay, there we go. I'm starting at the top and I'm going down. Then I go straight, long side, short side, long side again. Yes, now we're going to ask our friend to come and draw a rectangle for us on the blackboard. She is so willing to help. Let's see what she's going to do. Short side, long side, short side, and a long side again. Well done. Thank you so much. Hope you will finish this exercise at home. Yes, of course, mommy and daddy can help you and you can finish this. Don't forget to draw a rectangle at the bottom of the page, page 16. Yes, there is an open space on page 16 that you have to draw your own rectangle. And remember to trace over all the rectangles. Well done. Let's turn to page 17. Yes, we are looking for triangles and rectangles at the same time. Yes, you must find on that page some rectangles and triangles. And then you count them and you write the right amount on the given line there. Next to the triangles and next to the rectangles. You are correct. You can start counting. So I will help you with the triangles and let's see how many triangles do we find on that page. I can see one, two, three, four. Yes, let's write it down and you can complete the rectangles, count them and you can write the amount in there. And of course, don't forget to color in the picture. Hope you will enjoy this exercise. Hope you have enjoyed this lesson like we did. But before we go, let's sanitize our hands. It is very important to do so because we have to kill all our germs. Well done, make sure your fingers are nice and dry. And let's call our friends Zosie to come and say bye with us. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you so much, Teacher Lentina, for that wonderful lesson. Today we learned all about triangles and rectangles. So now, grade two and threes, I hope you are as ready as I am for week five, lesson three. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Teacher Precious, and I'm with my friend here. Say hello. Okay. The theme for this week is public transport. 
But before we begin our lesson, let us sanitize our hands. Let's sanitize. Okay, let's rub our hands. And we spread out our hands so that we don't touch the next person next to us. Okay? And remember to social distance. And when you are going out, always wear your mask. Our lesson for today in English is going to be verbs. We are also going to talk about the O sound. We are going to learn about creative writing and sight words. Let's now turn to page 16, where we are going to talk about verbs. What is a verb? A verb is a doing word. It's a doing word. Or we can call it an action word. We have different examples. You can clap. It's showing an action. So clapping is a verb. You can run. You can sing. All those, we call them verbs. And we have verbs given to you in that box. We have gifts, no, starts, and all the other verbs listed there. Now, this is what we are going to do. I want you to choose a verb to complete the given sentences below. I'll start by doing number one and two with you. The first question is, Barksas dash many pets. So you are going to choose a word to complete that sentence. I'll do it for you. Baruxas has many pets. Then the next sentence, Edwina dash running at 6 a.m. What do we say? We say Edwina starts running at 6 a.m. That's for all about our lesson for verbs. I want you to complete the remaining questions using the words in the box. Thank you so much, grade twos. Let's now turn to page 17, where we are going to talk about sounds. And today, we are going to talk about the O sound. And we are given different words with the O sound. We have blow. We have how. And all the other words given in that box. So this is what we are going to do. We will read them first. Blow, how, show, down, and all the other words. Now you read the sentence and fill in the given words. Let's do the first one and the second one. Did you hear the coach dash the whistle? What is the answer for the first question? The answer is blow. The coach blows the whistle. So we say, 
did you hear the coach blow the whistle? Okay? The circus stopped at the small dash. The circus stopped at the small dash. Okay? The answer here is town. They stopped at the small town. So I want you to do the remaining questions choosing the given words with the sound O and complete all the sentences. Now let's turn to page 18, grade threes, where we are going to fill in the sound O to make sound words, okay? We'll make words by filling in the sound O. We are given two examples. B, so the sound O was added to make it bow. Then we have a C, where the sound O was added to make the word cow. Let me do the N and the V. If we take the N and we add our sound O, we'll come up with the word now. Okay? Then we take a V and we add our sound O to make it a vowel. So I want you to do the remaining ones by just adding the sound O and come up with a lot of different words. That's all about the sound O. Please complete the given exercise in our booklet. Let's now move on to page 19, where we are going to learn about creative writing. Creative writing can also be called composition. Composition. I know it's new to you, grade threes, but it's very interesting. So we are given some guidelines to write a story. In a composition, we are going to write an interesting story. Use the guidelines provided below and write your own story of five to seven sentences about traveling on safari. What do you do when you are writing a composition? Here, in our booklet, it's written, a good story has an introduction. You tell us what you are going to write about in your introduction. Then in the middle of the composition, this is where you are going to write all the other things that you can think of about your topic given. And then we have an ending. You now end your story to tell us that this is the end of my story. Okay. It is written also in our booklet that before you start writing in your book or on a piece of paper, you must plan your work. You don't just write, okay? A plan is given. Here are some guidelines to help you plan. We are given a guideline. Where are you going? You don't just say safari or you don't just say etosha. You tell us, I am going on a safari to etosha or to Okapuka Range. Okay? 
then you add some of the sentences that you might think of or you can tell us why you are going there maybe you say i'm going to see the animals then how are you getting there you tell us how you will arrive and a composition is a continuous story you write a sentence you end here you must not come and write number 2 you also don't number a composition when you write your sentence you end here you put a full stop you space you continue they can continue some can come up to here so it's a continuous story who is going with you you can tell us about your classmates you can tell us about your grandparents and your parents what are some of the things you are packing to take with you you tell us because it will be what i'm going to carry my sunglasses hats and cooler bags so this will work as your plan to guide you right a an interesting composition that's all about composition grade threes. thank you let's now turn to page 20 where we are going to talk about sight words what are sight words these are commonly used words commonly used words and you use them without sounding out the letters you use them every day you don't need to sound the letters we have examples like i we also have is we have so then we have the as examples of sight words but we have a lot of them we are given some sight words in the box and you are going to fill in to complete the given sentences let me do the first two with you as well we will dash the foot girl the football game what will happen we will win okay we are given a sight word win so we will win the football game i was dash when he left i was sad you can be sad you can be happy i was sad when he left that's all about sight words grade 3s now you go to our booklet and complete the remaining sentences using all the sight words in the box thank you so much thank you very much for today's lesson now it's our time to sanitize our hands again let's sanitize and spread out our hands so that we don't touch the person next to us then we spread them in front as well and remember to social distance and when you are going out always wear a mask before we say goodbye let's call our friend zoshi to say bye what is social distancing hi everyone i am zoshi and i am back it literally just means that 
you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you very much, Teacher Precious. What a great lesson. Today, our grade two and three learners learned all about verbs and creative writing. Oh, it's my favorite type of writing. So grade four and five, I hope you are ready for week five, lesson five, science. Good morning, Namibia. Welcome to my Zone online school. My name is Laina Fotolela with my friend here. Before we start with today's lesson, let's first sanitize our hands. You rub your hands between the fingers in and out, and then we practice social distance and wearing our mask. Today's lesson, we'll be discussing about diseases. Let's turn on page 15. Let's look at the competencies. At the end of the lesson, you must be able to list examples of communicable diseases. For example, TB, measles, SDIs, rapers, and etc. You must be able to state environmental factors that can cause the spread of communicable diseases. During our lesson, we'll be using some new words that I want you to understand. Communicable can be passed on to other people disease and illness. Tuberculosis, which is TB, is an infectious disease that mainly affects your lungs. Measles, an infectious viral disease causing fever and a red rash, typically occurring in childhood. Sexual transmitted infections, which is STIs, is an infection passed from one person to another person through sexual contact. Rapers is a deadly virus spread to people from the saliva of infected animals. And lastly, chickenpox is a highly contagious disease caused by the initial infection virus. Now, what is a communicable disease? It is an illness that can spread from an infected person through saliva droplets from sneezing and coughing. List examples of communicable diseases. We have tuberculosis, which is TB. Now you will have high fever, Coughing up blood, weight loss, and sweating at night. Measles, you will have a dry cough, sore throat, fever, as well as a running nose. Sexually transmitted infections, which is STIS. You will not be able to give birth when you grow up, meaning you will be infertile. Let's turn on page 16. Continuing with the communicable diseases, we have rapers. You will have a fear of water, 
and you will also be a violet person. And lastly, there is chicken pox. You will have high temperature, headache, and you will not want to eat food. Now, if you notice that you have these symptoms, please visit the nearest clinic to get an injection and abstain from sexual activities for the STIS. State environmental factors that can cause the spread of communicable diseases. Poor water supply. Most of the germs live in dirty water and you will get diseases such as diarrhea. Poor sanitation facilities. There is also lack of health service. Unhealthy food or poor diet climate or weather like draft or flood. On page 17, there is an activity for you. Let's read the questions together. Question one, you list examples of communicable diseases. Question two, you state environmental factors that can cause the spread of communicable diseases. The memorandum is at the end of the booklet on page 22. This is the end of our presentation. Let's sanitize our hands again. Practice social distance and wearing your mask all the time. Stay home, stay safe. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Teacher Fortulela, you are a star. Thank you for that very informative lesson on diseases. So now I hope the grade sevens are ready for week five, lesson five, math. Welcome to My Zone Online School. My name is Mrs. Spinner. My friend is Pomweni. Welcome. Right, before we start, remember to always sanitize. Make sure your hands are clean. You sanitize. Please remember to keep your social distance and also remember to put on your masks. Today's lesson is Mathematics, Grade 7, Lesson 5, Multiples. When we go to page 13 in our booklet, we, can, we will continue with multiples. Now, what is a multiple? A multiple is the answer we get when that number is multiplied by another whole number. Again, a multiple is the answer we get when that number is multiplied 
by another whole number. For example, 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30 are all multiples of 6. Why? Because 6 times 1 equals 6, 6 times 2 equals 12, 6 times 3 equals 18, 6 times 4 equals 24, and 6 times 5 equals 30. So the multiples of 6 are the numbers that we multiply by 6, the answer of those numbers. In the block, we will find the multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80, and so on. Those are the multiples of 8. So if we multiply 8 with another whole number, we will find one of those answers. 8 times 1 will equal 8. 8 times 2, 16. So those are the multiples of 8. We go to our examples. If you are asked to write down all the multiples of 7 less than 40, remember the multiples of 7 less than 40. 7, 14, 21, 28, and 35. How did we find that numbers? If we multiply 7 by another whole number, we find the answer of those numbers. 7 times 1 up to 7 times 5 which is equal to 35, because our question is all the multiples of 7 less than 40. In number 2, the question is write down all the multiples of 9 between 20 and 80. So all the multiples of 9 between 20 and 80. So where will we start? If we see 9 times 1 is equal to 9, and we find that 9 is less than 20, we know that 9 is not one of the multiples that is between 20 and 80. So the first multiple of 9 from 20 onwards is 9 times 3, which is 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, and 72. The number after 72 will be 81. So 81 is more than 80. So the, now the numbers or the multiples of 9 between 20 and 80 are the ones that you have there in front of you in your booklet. Right. How, we did, how do we determine the lowest common multiple? And we call the lowest, or we, uh, the abbreviation for lowest common multiple is simply the LCM. Now let's define what the lowest common multiple is. If we look at the lowest, the word lowest means the smallest number, the smallest number. Common, common means the numbers that appears in both sets of numbers. The number that appears in both sets of numbers. And multiple is the answer to, to a multiplication table. In our example there, we have two sets of multiples. We have the multiples of three or four and the multiples of six. So we have to find the LCM. In the multiples of four, we have the set 
of Numbers 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And it continues. And the multiples of 6, which is 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And it continues. And we see the common multiples are 12, 24, 36, and 48. And so if we have to find the lowest common multiple, like we said, the smallest number of the ones that we find in both sets, we will see that 12 is our LCM. We're moving on to page 14. Now what we have on page 14 are some examples which I want to explain on the board for you. Now what do we have there? We have to find the LCM. And the LCM, like we said, is the lowest common multiple. Let's revise quickly. Lowest meaning the smallest number. Common, the numbers that we find in both multiples. And the multiples is a number that you, the answer of a multiple, of a, of a number that you multiply by another whole number. Now the first 12 multiples of four and six. How many? Let's find the multiples of four first. Can you help me out here? The multiples of four, where do we start? Four. He says four. Eight, 12, 12, continue, 16, 20, 20 24, 24 28. 28. I think we can stop there. You can continue with the other 12, with the other that's the rest. The multiples of six. If we have to find the first 12 multiples of 6, how many? Can you help me out here? Six. It says 6, 12, 12 18, 18, 24, 24 30. 30. And you can continue up to the 12, first 12 multiples. For many, by looking at these numbers, we have to find the common multiples. Common meaning the numbers that we find in both sets of numbers. Can you give me the common multiples that you see from the board here? He says 12. Can you find another one? 24. Right. So the common multiples in these two sets. Right. So we found our common multiples are 12 and 24. Now we have to find the LCM. LCM, L is for lowest. So we found the multiples of 4 and 6, we have found the common multiples. So now we have to find the lowest. Can you tell me which number is the lowest of these two numbers? 12. So our LCM is 12. We'll do another example. Are you ready, Pongwene? Okay, let's find the LCM of the following two numbers. If you go back to page 14, our example 2, we have to find the first 12 multiples of the numbers 6 and 8. So let's focus on the board again. The numbers that we have to find the LCM of are 6 and 8. 
from where is going to assist us? Can you give me the multiples of six? Six, six continue. Twelve. Twelve. Eighteen. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Thirty. Thirty-six. 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 And can continue up to the twelve multiples. The multiples of eight from Wene, can you assist us? Eight. Sixteen. Twenty-four. Thirty-two. Forty. Forty-eight. And we can continue. We add another one. Uh, what is this? The next one is forty-two. Am I right? Right. Pomwene, can you find the common multiples in these two sets of numbers? 24. What, which one? 24. He says 24. Is there another one? You find another one? No. So the only common multiple that we have here is 24. So it means our LCM, our lowest common multiple of 6 and 8 is 24. Now you can work on your own. We have activities that starts on page 15. The first activity is, all you have to do is to write all the multiples of 4 from 16 to 44. So remember, all the multiples of 4 from 16 to 44. Number 2, write all the multiples of 6 between 35 and 70. Number three, write down the first six multiples of nine. Number four, you have to write all the multiples of seven from 35 to 84. And in number five, it is expected from you to write all the multiples of eight between 40 and 80. In B, now you have to find the LCM because you have to use the numbers 3 and 9. First of all, you have to find the first 12 multiples of these numbers. Secondly, you have to discover all the common multiples. And then in C, you have to find the lowest common multiple. In number 2, we have to find the LCM of 3 and 4. Again, find the first 12 multiples of these numbers. B says you have to discover all the common multiples. And C, you are expected to find the lowest common multiple. Then we continue on page 16. You have to fill those three and four in in that space there provided. Number three, you have to do the same with the numbers four and eight. And then we go to number four. Yeah, we have to write down the multiples of each set of numbers and find the LCM of each set. The first set, we have two, five, and six up to 40. So you have to find the multiples of 2 up to 40, 5 up to 40, and the multiples of 6 up to 40. And number 2, you have to find the multiples of 6, the multiples of 8, and the multiples of 12 up to 60. 
and then you have to write down the LCM. Just re remember that we have to sanitize always. After each lesson, you have to sanitize. Remember to keep your social distance and don't forget your masks. I thank you. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! Thank you very much, teacher Pinar, for that exciting lesson all about multiples. So before I say goodbye, we also want to check in with our regions to see what they are up to. And today, Elizabeth Geises, who is an HOD all the way from Korechas, will be speaking to us a bit about their um, distribution of the educational booklets. And then we will also be checking in with my friend Elizabeth Joseph with one of her interviews with the great teachers assisting us in this project. But that's it from me to you so please stay safe stay at home and remember everything will be okay bye i'm elizabeth cases the hod of thf Kai primary school i'm the hod from grade zero to grade three we received the booklets and we distributed them all not all uh, some parents are staying on the farms and they are sending the books but it's impossible for us to give the booklets to the parents that are on the farms. So we urge the parents to come to the school, get the books themselves so that we can explain to them how they can go about on the activities. Uh, what is happening here is I am teaching grade two and I receive three, four booklet, uh, booklets from the Mylenas. Well, we are explaining to the teachers, uh, to the parents when they come and get the books, how they should help assist the learners. At least maybe on a separate paper, the parents say 2 plus 3 equals 5 with the circles or with the uh, matchsticks or with the uh, uh, stones or whatever they can help, uh, use for counting. And then the learner him or herself has to see how many is three and how many is two. It's good that we are helping the teachers, uh, the parents, to also see how we, the teachers, <laughs> got hard time with the learners at the, in the classes. Now the, the parents themselves are the teachers and they see themselves that it's very difficult to teach a learner. And some parents, even they come and say, ah, this case is, really, I cannot do that and that. And the learner is, so the parents are going on, but that is how it is. We have to assist one another. And I'm very happy to see that the parents themselves are experiencing it so that they cannot come and fight us anymore. If your learner is not doing good, then it is a three-leg pot, ne? It's a triangle. Not that you, yeah. So meaning that it is the teacher, the parent, and the learner who has to work together. The parents must assist the teachers, and the teachers must assist the learner. We only receive week one and week two booklets, the activities. Uh, so if the parent bring back uh, week one, we are giving the we tick off, and then we give back the parent the uh, week two booklet, the activity book. And only after, if the parent has given, bring back the activity booklet two, we will give them the booklet two or three. So up to now, we are only here for two weeks. 
meaning we are busy with, with two. The most of the parents come and collect, they came and collect their book booklets and then we gave it to them, but they did not bring it back. So we are still waiting for them to bring the books, uh, the activity books back so that we can again mark and uh, give it with them the book two. So far we are doing yeah. the grade one and two and grade three, the, uh, in the lower primary. Uh, it's, it's, it's up to the level of the learners. So a pre-primary learner, if he can do, he or she can do it, she go over to uh, the work of grade two, grade one. But we are explaining it to the parents because it is shown here on, uh, on the activity books that this one is for pre-primary level and this one is for uh, grade one level. And then we are telling them, if the learner can, then only you will you have to assist him in doing that. Don't force the learner. That is what we are telling them to do. So it's up to the level. Though some are a bit difficult, but they have to challenge it. There must be challenges, I believe. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Joseph and I am in studio again and I'm loving it guys. I'm definitely the luckiest uh, journalist to be able to have so many teachers come in and tell us who they are and their experience here at NMH. So today I have another lovely guest, but before we do anything, let's sanitize our hands. Make sure you sanitize and keep yourself very, very healthy. Yes. Uh, so ma'am, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Great. Uh, just tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you and uh, what is it that you have been doing here at NMH for us? Um, my name is Jane Muruko Naris. I'm a teacher at Fanarin Primary. I'm doing um, Afrikaans Grade 5. Mm -hmm. um, I've been helping with the booklets. You see these booklets that will be distributed to the learners all over Namibia. Mm -hmm. um, assisting in the English department, Grade 6 to 7, and in the Afrikaans department, Grade 4 to 5. All right. And how has that experience been for you? How, have it, has it been um, exhausting, fun? Can you just uh, describe it for us? It's very challenging, mm -hmm. time consuming, but it's very exciting because I'm learning a lot of new stuff. I met a lot of different people and um, it's a very nice thing to do because I'm doing it for my own children. You see. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So what is your expectation for this? So where do you see it going? If you could just sum it up for us. Um, Everybody, every child in Namibia will have an opportunity to quality material. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing um, that they will get. You see, some people in the remote areas do not have the necessary materials they need. So with these booklets, they have the chance to work in with quality booklets, quality content. Mm -hmm. And then they will have activities that they need to work out. Um, what I would like to see is, you see, the booklet is being sent out. Mm -hmm. But who says they are going to work through them? Maybe they'll just page through and go to the answers. Mm -hmm. If maybe we can implement a way of monitoring the work being done, get the booklet somehow back to the schools, maybe get them marked and so on, that would be awesome. All right, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, just maybe a last word of advice or encouragement to your students that might be watching you right now. Guys, let's work. Do not cheat. The booklets include answers at the back. Do not cheat. Do your work before you go check the answers. It's the only way you learn. There you have it. Miss Jane told you straight up. That's what you need to do. <laughs> so thank you so much for keeping it locked here on my zone's Facebook page. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining me. It's, it's always a pleasure to be here in studio. So till next time from us here in the studio, it's goodbye. Bye. <laughs>